Welcome back everyone to more X4 Foundations content here at Neepit Gaming. Today's video is all about auto trading and auto mining. We're going to cover everything from what types of ships to use for these activities to where to purchase these ships and also how to give commands to your ships so that they can operate autonomously and you not have to give them orders on a constant basis in order for them to uh, achieve their their profitability. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the profitability itself and the profitability of auto trading versus auto mining in my experience. Now we're going to be focused today in Argon Prime. So for those of you who are very early on in the game, uh, this should be areas that you've probably already reached if you're very far along in the game at all. But Minor spoiler warnings, uh, because I will be pulling up the map, so if you are either haven't started a game yet, or you are extremely early on in the game, you may not have seen nearly everything that I'm going to show you. For my part, I've spent most of this playthrough, in fact nearly all of it, uh, testing various concepts for mining and trading, so I've done very little exploration, but there could be some minor spoiler warnings. Also, I want to let you know that it's entirely possible during this video for messages to pop up in the bottom of the screen, either on the left or the right, because there has been a huge raiding party in the area. They came in with a few destroyers plus a huge raiding party to go with it, and they have been wreaking havoc in the area. I've lost a few ships uh, from this, but you might see those messages pop up, and if you do, that's why it's popping up. It's one of the fun parts of the game is that you have sort of random events like that and also that the world progresses during your playthrough. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with what ships to buy and where to buy them. There's a lot to discover and a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started with where to purchase ships. Now, each faction in the game has their own shipyards and wharfs, that you can use, but for our purposes, we're going to be talking about the Argon Wharf and Argon Shipyard that you will encounter fairly early on in the game. So if I bring up our map, there are the two locations that you can use in order to purchase or upgrade ships. First is the Wharf, the second is the Shipyard. The Wharf will be able to construct small to medium sized ships which you'll be using heavily early game, and then later into the game, you can go to the shipyard for large or extra large ships. But be warned, these ships uh, and of the large and extra large variety cost multiple millions in credits, so it's going to be a little bit of time uh, put in setting up your fleet and your uh, profit before you can actually use the shipyard. So for our purposes, we're currently docked here in the Argon Wharf, and that's where we're going to concentrate our activities. So once you get to a wharf or a shipyard, as the case may be, you're going to have a couple of options on how to purchase your ship. The first option is to physically go to the location that you and you see the icon for it uh, physically there in the station. In this case, it's located in uh, the upper area, and it's going to have an icon that consists of a wrench and a hammer. That's where you can go to upgrade as well as purchase ships if you prefer a physical storefront to go to. But for our purposes, we're going to use a much easier option, which is to bring up the dock interactions and simply go to the option to buy ships. Now we need to choose small or medium sized ship. We'll first take a look at one of the smaller ships and then we'll move on to the medium ships. We'll take a look at the smaller ship just to give you an idea of the cost involved. And for that, I'm actually going to use the low preset. You can use any of these. And of course, they will greatly affect the capabilities of your ship, both from the speed it can travel, as well as several other factors. But for our purposes, we're simply going to use the low preset to show you that about 250,000 credits is what you would need to get started with the smallest of the miners. There are two things to make sure, regardless of the preset or individual options you choose on the left-hand side of the screen, two things you need to make sure that you pay attention to. First is the type of storage within this type of miner. In this case, it is solid storage and 1,300 cubic meters of storage. That's not very much. You're, we're going to see something with a lot more than that very soon. So solid storage is what you're going to use to mine things like ore and ice. There is also liquid storage, which we'll see a miner for that 
here uh, momentarily. So once you have the type of storage that you're interested in based on the type of resources you want to mine, the other thing you need to pay attention to is uh, in this case, we don't have any turrets on this particular model. So under the weapons, we need to make sure that we choose a mining drill. Since we chose the low preset, uh, it is defaulting to the MK1. But of course, you've got an MK2 drill here that is uh, a step up and an upgrade over the MK1. And you can see the price difference that is contained there. So you'll want to make sure that you choose a mining drill. These are not fighting vessels. They are very weak, so it is uh, encouraged to think about having uh, ships that will accompany these miners around and try to protect them. So that would be your smallest miner. Now let's move up to more of the standard size of miner, particularly that you'll be able to build early on in the game, and that is the Drill Vanguard or the Sunder Vanguard. The Drill Vanguard has the solid storage. It also has room for both weapons and turrets. And the same thing goes for the Sunder Vanguard, except it is for liquid storage. So again, which one of these you choose will depend on what resources you want to mine. And we'll look at which resources they can mine a little bit later in the video. So for our Sunder Vanguard miner, we're dealing with liquid storage of 50 200, so quite a bit more than the 1,000 to 1,500 range that we saw earlier. 5,200 is what we're dealing with here. Next, you see that this does not have any weapon slots, but it does have two turret slots. And in these turret slots for a mining ship, we want to make sure that we have mining turrets enabled. For our purposes, we're going to once again choose the low preset, and you can see it's going to pre-fill that in for us and it's going to cost us somewhere around 350,000 credits depending on all of the final options that you choose. Keep in mind, this is the low preset. So your engine is going to be a very low model. Thrusters, shields, and so on are going to be sort of not quite bare minimum, but very close to it. So your ship capabilities on the low preset will not be anywhere near what they would be on something like the high preset, but the high preset, you can see the amount of money you would have to invest for that. So which preset you choose to go with and which of these options you choose to go with will be largely determined by your budget. All right, now that we've uh, talked about where to get miners and which miners are available early on in the game, let's talk a little bit about trading and where you could get trading vessels. We're going to stay within the medium size because the smaller sizes are very limited in their ability uh, to trade simply because their cargo uh, their cargo hold is very, very limited. So we're going to stick with the medium size. And there are two transporters in here that you can choose from. There is the first Vanguard with 7,400 cubic meters of storage. And then you can go up to 8,200 cubic meters of storage. And again, these will affect the type of uh, loadouts and money that you'll spend. In this case, we're a little over 400,000 credits for the low preset. And on this particular model, once again, we do not have any weapons, but we do have some turrets. You can see we've got two turrets, and it's primarily defaulted those uh, to, looks like pulse for both of those. No mining turrets on here because, again, this is not a mining ship, and that's where you're going to find uh, the mining turrets. So this is for uh, trading. Now you see the, the cost involved. Let's go back to uh, the other transporter, and there you can see basically the same price, but this particular transporter has a little bit less storage available to it. So those are the ships you can uh, purchase for either mining and or trading. We've also talked about where you can purchase those. Now let's move into the ships themselves and how do we give them orders. All right, we're going to get things started by talking about trading. And here is one of my trading vessels. Uh, here you can also see a couple of destroyers that have come in and are now in uh, a big fight here with some of the locals. 
So hopefully we can avoid that for the time being. Uh, we've not been so lucky in the recent past with, with this. So the first thing you're going to want to do whenever you uh, want to select a ship and then give it orders is you need to highlight it either on the map itself or you can come under the property own tab and select it in here. In this case, we're dealing with Trader Vanguard number one. So once we get it highlighted, we can simply right click on it, go to information, and we have two panels that we can look at. Of course, the first one is the storage. This is what they currently have on board. So if you want to check on them from time to time, this is a good place to look and see just exactly what they have on board uh, and where they might be headed. But the most important tab for giving orders is going to be the behavior tab. Now, by default, you see that uh, under default behavior, you see I've already set up auto trade. Now, if we click on that, you see there are a bunch of different options. You can choose to protect a ship, uh, which is a good idea for these vessels to actually set up protection for them and have fighters going alongside them. But in this case, we have two options here that will be important for us. There's auto mine and auto trade. This is a trading vessel, so we chose auto trade, but the miners, you would choose auto mine, and that's where you find it. All right, so now that, let's see, let's go ahead and click back on that so we can empty that out for uh, just a moment. And now after we choose auto trade, we're going to need to add which wares we want them to trade. Now, my recommendation is to stay away from anything that might be illegal in some of the territories that as you expand or might cause issues. Uh, for example, I have, I've had issues with energy sales. They're very cheap to purchase and in times past, before the most recent patches, I've had times where I, one of my trading ships would fill up on energy sales and then not be able to sell all of them and effectively become useless to me until I could unload all of the energy sales. So you'll figure out over time, mo I generally leave most of these available, but things that might be illegal such as space weed, I leave out so that I don't take any chance of getting caught by the police at a station and having to dump our cargo and losing all of the money that we had invested. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel back out, and you can see uh, that I have added several wares in here, and these are ones that I've had varying degrees of success with over time. Also, you notice there is a max gate distance to buy and then max gate distance to sell. That is very important because this will determine the distance that your trader will attempt to go in order to find viable trading opportunities. In this case, I've left it at the maximum so that he can find any and all trade opportunities that are within his reach. All right, once you are done setting up your options in here, you will simply hit confirm and your trader should go about the business starting in whatever area he is currently located in, which in our case is Argon Prime for our trader. He will simply go about his business. And as you check up on him from time to time, you will see various things like this, executing a trade. And if you expand that, you can see he's buying quantum tubes at the ship technology factory. Okay, he's going to purchase 100 there. And then the next trade down will be where he's going to sell those to the Claytronics factory. And a note about auto trading. Uh, at this point, I want to let you know that I would not start out with a trader. I would focus on the miners simply because the miners, in my experience, are making quite a bit more money than the traders. The traders from time to time can come upon some really good trades that make some very nice money, but I've not found that to be the norm. It's been more of the exception to the rule. Now that we have talked a little bit about uh, the auto trading, let's talk a little bit about auto mining. And for that, we're now going to highlight and select one of my uh, mining vessels. And again, you'll want to right click, select information. And then we want to come into the behavior tab. Once again, default behavior, I've already set it up to auto mine, which is right here. That only requires a one-star captain or pilot. Uh, so it's very easy to do. And generally, whenever I purchase a new ship, 
uh, and crew from a station, I've had at least a one star, if not better, on that. So that option should be available to you. So we select Auto Mine. Then after that, we select the wares that we want this guy to mine. This is where you see what is op uh, what options are available for solid storage. And in this case, ice, invidium, ore, and silicone. So you would choose one or all of those. Once you have your wares selected, then you have the max distance to go. And if we back out of there, you can see I've got this guy working on only ore and silicone. And his maximum gate distance to travel is two gates. And that gives him just a little bit of flexibility. If you're in a dangerous area uh, or have dangerous areas nearby in uh, neighboring sectors, then maybe you want to keep this down to one or a zero. But in this case, I've given him two so that he can jump around a little bit to find the resources and uh, the selling capabilities that he might need. But I So depending on your comfort level and how safe the areas are, at the time that you're working in them, you can increase or decrease this uh, to adjust the amount of travel that your miners and as well as traders will do. So that will take care of the behavior. Now, let's talk a little bit about when you're mining, how you can determine manually where your trader or excuse me, your miners go in order to mine resources and also where they go to sell resources. So here we have solid storage and we know that we can mine ore and silicone and as well as a couple of other options but let's let's come back out of that and let's pretend for a moment that this guy doesn't have any particular orders so we would simply highlight him and then we're going to right click in the area of the map that we want him to mine for resources and you'll need to track down these areas on the map if you need a little help, pull up the legend, and here you can see the locations that are available. Mineral regions, which you see here in a darker red, and he is right at, currently right in the middle of one of those areas. There are gas regions in blue, and then as well as a mineral and gas region that is in a purple shade. So what you would do is find the area based on the miner that you have, and you want to right click sort of in the middle of the area that you want him to go to. So we're going to right click for our purposes right here. And then we can come down to mine and choose what we want him to mine. Once you select this, he will travel to this area if he's not already there. And then he will begin mining. Once he's done mining, he will simply stop and go back to whatever default behavior you might have set up. If that's a hold position, then... He's going to be done. Now you have to set up where you want him to go and sell. Now, in the case of ore, I happen to know that there is an ore refinery right down here that purchases ore. But if you're not sure of anywhere that might be purchasing ore, then you can simply come into your filter settings, trade filters, and then under add new where, you can simply come down and find there's ice. And if we come down a little farther, there is ore. So that's going to filter our trade opportunities to only ore, and we can scroll back out as, as wide as we want to or in as deep as we want to, and you can see we found one or more stations that are willing to purchase ore, and again, we already know that that is coming from the ore refinery right there, so I'm actually going to power this back off and get rid of that. So what then what we would do, again, while we still have our ship highlighted, our mining ship is still highlighted, we will come over to, in this case, the ore refinery, right click on it and select trade with. And then you would simply have the slider go to however much ore you want him to sell, click on confirm, and you have completed the process of having him mine in a certain area and then sell his wares in that certain area. That's if you want to do it manually. But of course, as we already talked about, if you want to do this under auto mine, then you will simply set up the default behavior and he will be off and running. He will mine automatically and then sell automatically based on the criteria that you give him in here. All right, so, so far in this video, we've talked about what ships to purchase, 
where to purchase them, and then how to go about giving them orders to either have them auto trade, auto mine, or sort of semi automatically trade or mine. Now we're going to finish up the video talking about profitability. And to do that, I ran a test after the most recent, as of this recording anyway, the most recent update of 1.21. 1.21 was significant in that it included some changes to uh, the trading in the game and hopefully fix some bugs where your auto traders could actually take on losing trades and lose a bit of money from time to time. Thankfully, since the 121 update, I have not seen any losing trades from my traders and I have three of them currently flying around the galaxy and probably be about twice that many miners that are flying around as well. So let's talk a little bit about profitability. Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video that trading is not nearly as profitable right now for me as mining. So let's talk some specific numbers. I ran a test over about a 30 or 40 minute period. I, I forget exactly how long it was uh, and it doesn't really matter, but the relationship between the mining and the trading is what really matters. During that amount of time, one of my traders made four trades and made a total of between 10 and 15,000 credits of profit. That's not very good when compared to during that same amount of time. My, one of my average, again, I have about probably five to seven uh, miners, auto miners out working. And the average was anywhere from about 30 to 35,000 in profit all the way up to 60 or 70 thousand credits in profit. So quite a difference there. The amount of money you make trading will depend on a lot of factors, such as the amount of distance they're allowed to travel within the galaxy, uh, your, your time in the game. Early on, there might not be as many trading opportunities or at least different trading opportunities as what you're going to find later in the game as the factions continue to build and expand. So right now, what I'm using my traders mainly for is to try to keep the economy going. They're moving goods around, and even though they're not making a ton of money for me, they're still doing okay, and it keeps the economy flowing in the game and keeps things progressing. Now, I have had traders that from time to time, they will have some really good trades where they make fifty to 70,000 credits in profit on a single trade, but I found that to be more the exception than the rule. So you guys let me know if you're seeing similar types of numbers as far as a relationship between the auto mining and auto trading, or maybe you're having better results with the auto trading. Either way, there is a great de degree of variability in the game. And again, at what point you find yourself in the game and how far along the different factions are as far as building and expanding. That's going to do it for now. Thank you very much for joining me. And stay tuned as we will continue X4 Foundations here at Knee Pit Gaming.